his tall figure moving here and there. Abruptly, they saw a tall, dark-haired girl, only a head shorter than the big holder, approach him and hold him in long conversation. That must be Shara, Manoli said, noticing several fire lizards converge over the girl's head. One of them landed on her shoulder, and Manoli gave a snort. Torek certainly has his queen well-trained, hasn't he? Suddenly, a sound paralyzed them. The sharp thudding of a practiced hand against what could only be the newly acquired drum round. A practiced hand that beat a measure. Harper here. Anyone else? And the staccato that was a question. It has to be Peemer! Manoli's cry was a half gasp, half scream. But the words weren't quite out of her mouth before both Harpers were on their feet and running toward the ramp up from the harbor. What's the matter? They heard Torek yelling after them. That was Peemer! Sabelle managed to gasp out as he charged a bare stride ahead of Manoli. But when they skidded to a halt on the shell-strewn area before the cavern, there was no one about. Sabelle cupped his hands about his mouth. Peter! Report! Beauty! Rocky, where is he? gasped Manoli, half angry with Peemer for that heart-stopping shock. Sabelle? The harper's name echoed and re-echoed coming from the cavern. Sabelle and Manoli were halfway there when a tanned, bare-legged, shock-haired figure ran straight into them. Manoli, Sabelle, and Peemer were entangled in mutual cries and thumpings of rediscovery when a tiny fire lizard queen began attacking Sabelle and a small runner beast tried to butt Manoli's knees from under her. Beauty, Rocky, and Diver immediately drove off the little queen but it wasn't until Peemer, dashing tears of relief and joy from his eyes, called Farley to order and reassured Stupid that any sort of coherent conversation was possible. Farley Stupid! By that time, Shara, Torek, and half the Southern Hold were aware that the lost had been found. A celebration for the successful return of the Harvesters would have been held in any case, but the evening was certainly crowned by Peemer's appearance especially after he was reassured that his absence would be forgiven by the Master Harper in view of the extraordinary outcome of the initial folly of stealing the queen egg from Moran's hearth. Sabelle and Manoli listened intently when Peemer accounted for his continued absence once Farley had been impressed. He was wiser not to come back right then anyhow, said Shara before Tor could speak. If you remember, Marjor was in a taking over that unclosed sack and ready to flay the hide off the back of the culprit. Though what she wants with more to wear here, I don't know. The wilderness has its own thrall, said Torek, eyeing Peemer so closely that the boy wondered what he'd done wrong now. Tell me, young apprentice Harper, how did you survive Threadfall the day your queen hatched? In the water, under a ledge in the lagoon, said Peemer, as if that ought to have been obvious. Farley didn't hatch until after Threadfall. Torek nodded approval. And the other Threadfalls? Underwater. Only by that time I'd sort of found a camp by the river above the numbweed meadows. He glanced at Shara, whose eyes twinkled at the truth he now chose to speak, where I found a submerged log to hold on to and a long reed to breathe through. Why didn't you come back after the second fall? I found stupid, and I couldn't travel far or fast until he was grown up. Shara bubbled with laughter then, for the ingenious expression in Peemer's face was just short of impudence. You were certainly making tracks eastward to the sea when our paths crossed, she said. You expected me to stay anywhere near people making numbweed, asked Peemer, with such disgust that everyone laughed. I'll bet there were times in the marsh when you wished you were back just harvesting numbweed, said Shara, grinning at Peemer, who rolled his eyes upward. You went alone to the marshes? Torek was not pleased. I know the marshes, Torek, said Shara firmly, as if this were a continuation of previous arguments. I had my fire lizards, and in fact, I had Peemer, Farley, and Little Stupid. And I'll add one thing. Now she turned to the Harpers. Your young friend is a born southerner. He's apprenticed to Master Robinton, said Sabelle, with a warning to Peemer that brought a sudden silence to the main table. He is wasted as just a Harper, said Shara after a moment. Why, I... And I'm not really a harper right now either, am I, Sabelle? asked Peemer, suddenly collecting his wits. I was only good as a singer, and I have no voice. Is there really a place for me at the harper hall? I mean, and he rattled on, his eyes going from Sabelle to Manoli. I know you and Manoli thought you could get me to help you two, but a fine help I turned out to be, getting sacked up and sent south without even knowing it. It's not as if I was good at anything except getting into trouble. Useful trouble, as it turned out, said Sabelle. But I just had an idea to keep you out of trouble for a while. 
The journeyman turned to the southerner. You rather like the idea of message drums, Torek. And, Senator, you say you've forgotten most of the measures you learned. Well, now, Peemer hasn't. I could be drum messenger here. Peemer was suddenly open-mouthed with shock. Sabell held his hand up to get a word in, and the radiance in Peemer's face faded. I can't be certain until I've asked Master Robinson. But frankly, Torek, I think Peemer could serve his hall very well right now as drum... No, drum apprentice master, if Senator wouldn't mind being taught by one of lower rank. Sabell then turned to the startled Hold Harper, Harper to explain. Rukaius, who is Master Alodki's senior journeyman, said that Peemer was one of the quickest, cleverest apprentices he's ever had to beat measures into. If you wouldn't mind him refreshing your memory. Senator laughed and beamed encouragingly at Peemer, whose face once again shone. If he can put up with a fumble-fingered old Harper. Torek, a southern holder. Sabelle paused delicately, for he had caught the narrowing of the big man's eyes and wondered if he had presumed too much. Troublemaker in the hall? Torek frowned, giving each one a long, expressionless look, pausing to stare hard at Peemer. The boy held his breath so long his face began to turn bright red under his tan. Actually, not a troublemaker, Torek, said Manoli. He just has a lot of energy. We could certainly use There's drums for messages. Of reputation. To the coastal hold, said Torek, in a slow drawl, his face closed on his thoughts. Can Peemer make the drums? He asked Sabelle. I'd prefer to stay and supervise, Sabelle murmured. Well, in the ordinary way, I wouldn't accept another nor northerner. But as Peemer has already proved he can survive on southern lands, I will make an exception in his case. At the shouts of joy, he held up his hand once more, commanding instant silence. Contingent, of course, on the approval of the Master Harper. He'll be so glad to hear that Peemer's alive and well, cried Manoli, fumbling in her pouch for the message tube. Ah, oh, Manoli, it's not as if I hadn't listened to everything you told me about fire lizards and your life in the Dragonstone Caves and all. You'll find this lad has ears in every pore of him, said Sabelle, giving Peemer's right one an affectionate twist. And tell Master Robinson I've got a queen and a tame runner beast, Peemer told Manoli, who was busily writing. I wouldn't have to leave stupid behind if I have to go back to the harbor hall, would I, Sabelle? Sabelle said something soothing and watched as Manoli made the message too fast. I couldn't think of anything he, to tell him to say, so no, Sabelle had something stupid. To Beauty's leg, told her to go back to Master Robinson and return as soon as possible. Do you think he'll let me stay? Peemer asked Manoli then, his eyes round with hope and anxiety. You did put your time in the drum heights to good advantage, Manoli said, hoping that this solution to the problem of Peemer's immediate future did indeed meet with Master Robinson's favor. The boy so clearly had thrived in his few seven days here. She could swear he was taller and had broadened through chest and neck, and there was no question but what his unexpected trip to Southern had altered him in many subtle ways. She caught Sabelle's glance and knew that he had observed those changes too, that the journeyman must see that this broad and unexplored Southern land could absorb the energies and intelligence of their young friend far better than the more traditional Harper Hall. Bet you didn't think it would result in an opportunity like this. Solemnly, Peemer shook his head from side to side. Then the laughter that always lurked in his eyes showed through. Bet you didn't either. Most of the Southerners then prevailed on the two visiting Harpers for the latest Northern songs, always a happy importation. So the time passed quickly for most while Beauty delivered her message. The moment the little golden queen swooped into the cavern, every sound died. For by now, the prospect of Peemer as drum messenger had filtered to every southerner present, and the suspense was universal. But Beauty was so attuned to the message she carried that her caroling answered Peemer's question before the confirming words were read aloud. Well done, Peemer. Safely stay. Drum journeyman. Congratulations were loud and cheerful, with Peemer's back being thumped and hand shaken until he was nearly dizzy with such sudden acclaim after so much solitude. When Sabelle saw him take an opportunity to leave the cavern in the continuing festivity, he started to follow, but Manoli shook her head, already halfway to the door. So it was only Manoli who heard Peemer say to the tired little golden queen that clung to his neck, I wish I had a drum big enough to tell the whole world how happy I am. The end. Aww. Wait, I can't tell. Is Peemer going back?